I'm going to attempt to uh, get this other floppy disk drive going, number one here. Um, so let's turn this on again, uh, although you probably just saw it a minute ago when it decides it wants to try and boot. So there we go. So to me that kind of sounds like the heads are not moving. They might be stuck. And so I might need to take this apart or <clears throat> free the heads and uh, lubricate it. And luckily I bought some good old oil for that or a lubrication for that. And now it's asking me for how many files. Let's just tell it to get the fuck out. Um, so now I got the drives pulled up. Um, it should be only three little screws here holding it back together or holding the drive on. We'll pull that off. Luckily I found out I did not have to remove the CBUS stuff to get to the drive, so that's pretty handy. Uh-oh, I heard something loose in there. Uh, that's not good. Hello. Let me uh, just unplug you. Not quite. Okay, so... So obviously... <laughs> so obviously something is not right. Okay. Let's pop this sucker open. Now, how do you go about disassembling this? This is the real question here. Here's the data cables, I guess, from the uh, from the heads. Yeah, they didn't want to move very well. Okay, now that's a stepper for the uh, the heads, which were completely seized up. It's free now. Oh, hello. I don't know if you can see that in there. You can see that on top of the spindle, if my camera focuses. That's a cap for one of the, the reed heads. So that's what's wiggling around. Um, yeah, let's pull the faceplate off, maybe. Prepare for some tardation on my part, because I know I'm bound to do something very wrong. Luckily, these are all different connectors here. Uh, I might need to take those off now. This should pop right out. Ugh, looks that's like the I.O. board. Those two screws also hold this metal plate here. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I'm liking this. Um, I'm still not sure what that motor there is for. A solenoid. wonder what that's... Uh, I'm popping in and out for so we can swing this around. There's that. Probably would have been a good idea to, uh, you know, um, take it apart first because I know there's probably two of them in here somewhere floating. So that clicking noise is probably the solenoid when it tries, uh, you know, reading the thing, but I'm not entirely sure why that solenoid would be there. However, it does seem that we've removed the obstruction. I'm not seeing any other head covers laying around. Hopefully that didn't bend things out of alignment by uh, running it with that floating around in there. I guess the mechanism needs a little bit of work. As you can sort of see, sometimes it lowers the head, sometimes it doesn't. Just gotta wiggle it a little bit. Maybe it will free itself up over time. All right, so I got it back together again. Let me uh, make sure it's off, turn that on. I'm gonna stick load runner in this disk drive here. Give it a couple taps because it's retarded. And uh, I have the case on, but not screwed down because I don't want any tants blowing up in my face if that's gonna be the case. I'll give it a couple seconds and see if it bitches and complains about the uh, disk that's in there. That should be set. It did click in because the uh, spindle started spinning. I think I got everything plugged in right. No, it's still pissed off. Wonder why. So now, I think I'm just going to have to get used to the fact that uh, working with old machines like this means that I might have a tantalum blow on my face, so I'm just going to deal with it. We'll start it up and uh, pop in some load runner. It's all way seated. Start it up. We will see what that head does. It takes a while.
So that is the solenoid. So, it might not think that it's getting close enough to the disc. I think that might be what it's doing. So I pulled the top off the other drive for a little age-old game of uh, spot the difference. And one difference I spotted right away is that that little cover comes from above the head. So maybe that prevents interference and maybe that's why uh, my second drive, or, or more technically my, my first drive, is upset. So that's weird, it pops the heads up and down when it uh, breeds. I wonder what the purpose of that is. So maybe this screw right here, that's a possibility that this screw is not quite set right. Or on the other drive, this screw right here is not set right, so it's not lowering the disc down, or the heads down enough. Or maybe it's lowering the heads down too much and making contact with the, uh, the disc. So let's pop in Evo real quick. I'm gonna get a better look at this as it uh, loads the scenes in Evo. So when it's not reading, it keeps the, the heads up. So somehow I got this working now. So it's booting off drive number one and it's running uh, Evo very slowly as it would because it's 10 megahertz. Anyway, um, what I did, well, after taking the part about half a million times, I noticed that this little uh, nub here is broke. I'll put a picture on the screen. And what that seems to do is that it was siliconed to the back of the head and uh, for whatever reason it broke and the head was kind of uh, forced downward. I don't know what caused that. Well, anyway, I, I took that nub off and I pushed the head upwards a little bit um, back to where it usually would be if it, the nub, nub hadn't broke. So after that, it didn't really do anything. It started, you know, doing the same click and crap. And then I noticed that the disc wasn't spinning. As you can sort of see here, as you can sort of see, the disc is spinning inside there. You can visibly see it through that uh, colored disc. So it wasn't spinning at first. So what, what would happen is that the, uh, the drive pin for the spindle was bent downward so it couldn't make contact with the, uh, the actual spindle deal. So it was, um, you're not turning the disc at all. So now it's spinning the disc and uh, the head's back where it's supposed to be, but it still didn't work. It was still doing that click thing. So what I did was I ran out of uh, ideas. So I started adjusting this screw right here. Let me send my camera. I started adjusting this screw up and down a little bit. And what that does is it adjusts the height of the upper head when the solenoid is activated, thus the, the disc is down. I think it gave up. Nope, there it goes. All right, that was just the very beginning of the intro. But anyway, so that adjusts where the heads are on the down position. And so I just adjusted that back and forth until one time the, uh, click was uh, going a little bit slower and it looked like it was actually trying to move the heads a little bit but then it started clicking again so I'm like hey I might be going the right direction with this so I kept on adjusting it and adjusting it and then finally it booted Evo so now if we were to stick a disc 2 into here actually I can't show you because uh, of course my keyboard's not plugged in let me put this back together now now I know what you're thinking. This does not look like it's back together again. And 24 hours later and a lot more misery to be had, um, here we are again. However, it is running Evo. There's a bit of an issue with it though. So, you know I have 640k of memory installed, right? Well, it turns out, well, this is cool and all. Uh-oh, what the fuck is this? Also, uh, it's kind of got some problems. So, there's something wrong here. And what that is, is that we're running out of memory. Believe it or not, if I take the disks out right now, this is what we get. I'm going to put 15 files here. We're going to see the memory size is 375 kilobytes, or 8, 384. So even though I have 640K installed, it's only seeing you know, three banks of that instead of uh, five or whatever the heck. So, what gives? So, you might remember on my AS2 videos, when you take the battery off the uh, computer, uh, the CMOS battery, and turn the computer on, it ha likes to have a bitch fit, and it likes to spew text characters and all that shit all over the screen and uh, say that the software dips have been reset. 
Now it's not only the AMATES that have a software dip, even though this one has hardware dip switches for setting uh, system parameters, it actually has software dip switches or software settings for the, for the BIOS in like some sort of CMOS memory. However, there's no built-in um, you know, setup for it, so of course it's uh, quite hidden away. So I spent like four hours yesterday trying to figure out why this memory wasn't working. I got my little logic probe out and stuff and was buzzing around on it and looking stuff up on the internet. And uh, I couldn't figure anything out. In fact, 8086 shit is a huge mess and it's not very, uh, not very simple, so I gave up on that. So, turns out that someone else in the Discord who also has a UV2 had some, somewhat of a similar issue uh, getting his memory to work on a, me a CBUS memory board. So, turns out that I forgot about the software dip switches that aren't in the BIOS and are not actually switches on this one. So on the AS2 there are actually settings. Get the fuck out of here, bug. It's scaring the shit out of me. Um, ooh, heebie jeebies. There are actually uh, BIOS settings you cannot access in the BIOS. You have to run DOS and uh, run the switch command. However, um, well, you don't have to do it in DOS. There's also a way to do it in uh, 88 Basic. So let's open up a B drive here. Let's run switch. Some of these keys need to be exercised a little bit. Oh, what's this? Main memory. Uh-oh. We don't want 384. All right, that's a problem. It'd be nice if the monitor actually displayed the full image instead of just, you know, the top portion of it. So I had an ongoing, uh, ongoing uh, theme with work today, and that was, if you want it to work, leave it the fuck alone. But I'm hoping that's not going to carry on into my uh, the rest of my day here. Aha, 6.40, okay. So we're going to say we're finished. Um, there's obviously multiple switches down here that you can go back and forth between. So we got 640 now. Um, let's reset it. Instead of showing memory in uh, basic, because I'm lazy and I don't want to take the disks out, we'll um, boot it up in DOS and run the mem. Also, it seems to be booting a little bit faster after I set that. Is it just me? So I've also read online that if you have a corrupted... Uh, internal memory for the CMOS, it could prevent your computer from booting, so maybe that's why it took so long for it to boot, boot a couple times, but when I, you know, set it and hit reset it, boot it up pretty quick. So let's open up B and then type in mem. See what we got. Fuck, still 384. Um, okay, that's a problem. All right, so here's plan number two. So Either I'm missing something on that DOS program because I can't see the entire screen or it requires a full cold boot to uh, do its configuration. So what we're going to do is try it the, uh, with the uh, um, basic mode. So what we can do here is we can open up the monitor in basic and um, use that to set the software dip switches. And it would be switch 3, bits uh, 2, 1, and 0. But uh, since I'm dumb and I can't do math in my head very well, I'm going to use the calculator because uh, that just makes life easier. So let's go to the uh, VGA here and power it on. So we can see it still has uh, that, I'm um, pretty sure. Okay. Right now, switch five is only set to 01. So what we need to do is, well, since it's only 01, I mean, it's just going to be very easy to edit because uh, 640K was, what, 404 in uh, hex because it's only uh, switching on the third bit, switching off the first bit, and everything else is turned off. So we'll just uh, so software switch 5, 01 to, uh, what did I just say it was? 04? 4, yeah, yeah, 04. So it's going to be 04 now. It reset back to 01. So shoot it does need the battery so this is a problem i will not be able to get 640k without a cmos battery and so with more help from uh people on discord and minus zero degrees.net i've 
I've uh, soldered up a, a CR2032 connector or uh, socket plug battery holder whatever with a diode so hopefully that should work and I won't have anything explode in my face because uh, that would be just perfect I didn't really want to bust out the, the soldering iron but you know with old computers I guess it's inevitable alright so here goes nothing I suppose and everything So C640, I think the memory got corrupted or something. Let's uh, switch that back up to off. So I think that all that other crap there was uh, invalid data because that switch might have been in the wrong spot when I booted it up. Hmm. I don't know what I'm doing, clearly. And probably 384. Oh, oh, there we go, 640. Hello. Now this could be interesting because uh, part of the graphical corruption could have been just uh, misreads from the floppy disk drives. So I'm not entirely sure of their uh, reliability yet, especially the one that I've messed with. Alright, the graphics are all good. My 8 key still needs to be worked in a little bit. Now it's time for a real test. Not, not, the te not a test of the computer. More of a test of my patience than anything. Let's uh, load up some Puyo Puyo. Last time I tried it, it complained to me that it didn't have enough memory. Obviously because it didn't have enough memory to run. Alright. Now unfortunately, at this point you think it might be kind of sunshine and roses and shit, but it's not quite finished yet. Um, I'll either have to get probably another disk drive or uh, I'll have to uh, figure out how to make a VFO circuit so I can use a GoTech or something like that because this drive still is not happy. Well, I was going to show you how it got a uh, config.sys error or read error when reading the config.sys when uh, booting Evo. However, I seem to have messed up the boot sector on this, so even on my good hard drive, this will beep an I.O. error at me because it can't read what the hell it's, whatever's there. However, uh, DOS will still boot up on this drive. So, you know, I think this is about as good as it's going to get. I'm just going to mess around with this for a little bit more. I'm going to slap it back together and we get one final look at it, and it's uh, dirty, dirty glory. When they said it has mono audio, they meant it because it's only coming out of one speaker. Look, sounds pretty good though. That's through the line out. Well, anyway, when it's not strewn across your garage, it's a nice little small form factor computer. And while it's not perfect right now, um, it does need a little bit of work. I know, one thing I noticed when I put the case back on is that there's a dent right here. So I wonder how that broken floppy disk drive happened. They might have uh, bashed it on something. But, it appears to be working good enough for now, so I guess I'll go write a bunch of floppies of random games and see what kind of crap I can find.